Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast with your hosts, Bill Algy, Dennis Talbot, and Alan Tate. We are three guys who have one thing in common, a love of rock and roll. Our goal is to talk about all things rock. We hope you find this show intriguing, funny, and occasionally highly opinionated. Enjoy. Welcome to the Ages of Rock podcast, episode number 58. Tonight we have uh, the lead singer of one of my favorite tribute bands, which is uh, Hairbangers Ball. I've seen them probably 15 times, wow. something like that. It's kind of sick, actually. Anyway, <laughs> but I did see, so tonight we have a guest, which is Brian Durbin. He's the uh, latest lead singer for the band and been in there for about a year, right? Yeah, just about a year. Um, yeah. I should add, but most people don't know this because of the um, the privacy changes on Facebook and all the rules and stuff. But most people don't. My stage name is Mick Yeager, but everyone knows me just by my real name now at this point in time. But you only hear my name at the end of the show, like when Polly introduces me, like oh, on vocals, Mick Yeager. Huh. So yeah, no one no one knows apparently. Like it's it's just the way it goes, I guess. But yeah, I have a ridiculous name just like the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool though. It's they're cool yeah. names. Um, so um, your first show was in Bloomington, wasn't it? Last year was that your first uh, show or one of your first shows, right? That was my first show on vocals. I actually did a month where I was playing lead guitar too. Um, in January, while there were some lineup changes going on, and then um, <laughs> my first vocal show was the Bluebird in February. Cool, man. You did a good job. I was there that night. Oh, thanks, because I had strep throat, too. So I'm yeah, glad. You didn't sound too bad. It's, oh I God, thought it sounded a little raspy, but I thought it was just... You know, just, I'm just That's I'm probably just, just me. Yeah, Alan and I are... We're, we're, we're only one-timers, but we did see you up at the Bluebird. and. Uh, well, that's was, not true. I am a two-timer. I've seen him in Evansville. Oh, that's right. You did go oh, see cool. Wait, well, I take that back. I have seen him in Evansville. So, okay, I've seen you twice, then. Well, we saw, <laughs> we saw another version of them in Evansville. Right, exactly. Together, and then I have Brian not seen Brian. I have not seen Brian play, yeah. so that I'm looking forward to it. So, are you guys going to be at the show on Saturday? I will be there Saturday. Wow. I'm bringing uh, I'm bringing two uh, Hairbangers Ball virgins to sacrifice. Excellent. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, they're not women. Sorry, dude. And then um, <laughs> no, <it's> all right. <laughs> and then um, a buddy of mine has come a couple of times. So yeah, we're going to hang out and try to catch a show. Be fun. Cool. So, Brian, tell us about yourself. Kind of where are you from? What are you doing? And we want to talk a little bit about how you got into the Hairbangers Ball and what got okay. you there. Well, like um, like everyone else from Hairbangers Ball, I'm from Chicago. Um, I am uh, 30 years very, very young, <laughs> I like to think. Um, but, um, yeah, I've just been – I've been playing on this scene that they've been playing on for a really long period of time. Um, I grew up listening to bands like Kiss and Aerosmith and Motley Crue and um, Skid Row, Guns N' Roses, all that stuff. So um, it's very much a match made in heaven. Um, it's, it's amazing to be able to – like my job is I go up on stage and sing all of my favorite music. I haven't had to grow up or anything like that. I get to <laughs> – I get to play make believe for a career and it's pretty cool. But um no, I was in I was actually in original bands um in the area around here where we wrote our own songs and uh I was playing in my band Love Blast um at the time and I, who I still play with um we actually just opened for Sebastian Bach um at the Q&Z Expo Center in uh wisconsin so when there's an opportunity when hairbangers ball hairbangers ball is my main thing but when there's an opportunity um my original band where i write my own songs for we'll do our own shows and we'll usually play with like you know sebastian bach brett michaels Dokken. um we did a tour with faster pussycat and all go. sorts of stuff like that so i'm really really heavily rooted in this 80s hair metal stuff it's not it's not a game for me. It's not a show. It's it's all real. Uh, <laughs> so, um, no, I mean this this is absolutely what I love. This is absolutely the type of music I listen to. And yeah, it's. It, I mean, the only difference between me on any day of the week is I'm I'm wearing some eyeliner and I might have a bandana on. Other than that, I look exactly the way you see me on stage. Pretty much, that's pretty cool. much it. So. 
Yeah. So how was it opening for Sebastian Bach? Oh, or in and, some, in some of those other guys. How is it being a, an opener for those guys? Are they pretty cool or? Um, usually, um, a lot of times they are pretty cool. A lot of times you don't really have access to them because they've been doing it for so long. And, you know, these guys, these guys are veterans at this point in time with it. So a lot of them, they've got their tour bus like on the side of the venue and then they just, you know, it's, it's a long day of interviews and then they get to the venue and they've got a sound check and then they've got the show. And now a lot of bands are having meet and greets afterwards before, I mean, before you know it, it's like a 12 hour day. So a lot of them just like to like their downtime and they like to stay in their bus and you know after doing it for you know some of these guys 30 40 years i mean it's just it's just the nature of it so i mean you meet the ones that you can and um you know hopefully they're they're a cool person but most of the time we just kind of show up and do our thing and it's really all about between like us and the fans is really all it's about so and the thing that I'm happy to be with Hairbangers Ball for is Hairbangers Ball has quite the many fans, the uh, the Bang Masters, as we like to refer to them. <laughs> so, yeah, that's yeah, a, that's, that's cool. a pretty cool fan club right there. Yeah, it's, it's not a bad one. It doesn't suck. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Or maybe it does. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. It's good. So mm -hmm. what got so um what got you? What made you decide to switch to Hairbangers Ball? I mean, was it just the uh, you um, like that well, type of music? You wanted the variety, or? Well, the um, the true nature of it is, um, it's very hard being a Chicago original band, and it's becoming even harder for an original band anywhere to sustain a career doing it because um, there's so much illegally downloading, illegal downloading of music and stuff. So it's hard to get people to pay for your product. And then a lot of times when you're opening for a band, um, they don't have a budget for an opener. Or sometimes if you see a young band opening for a headliner on tour, nine times out of 10, they paid thousands of dollars to go on tour with that band. So they're making all their money off of merchandise. So what happens is it, most people think, well, you know, these these young bands, they're getting paid for their performances. Most of the time, they're not getting paid for their performances. Um, most of the time, you know, when unless it's at a show and someone's buying a CD there or something, it, um, most of the time people are illegally downloading their music. So it's really hard to sustain for a really long period of time and do it at a high quality if you're not getting paid. Um, so then the other, the other thing to do is what one thing that Love Blast was starting to do is Love Blast was starting to shift towards being a cover band in Chicago so we could finance all of our stuff. And then I got the phone call to join Hairbangers Ball, who I was, I was already very aware of and I was already a big fan of what they did. So at that point in time, I was like, all right, I could spend the next five years building my original band into a cover band and hope it pays off or I could join a band I'm already a fan of and is already really successful around the Midwest. So it took me a little time because I had had so much time invested in my original band, but I really know now for sure I made the right decision to join Hairbangers Ball um, because it's, it's so much fun. I mean, the audiences are great. The songs are great. They're all my favorite songs. Um, it's, it's like the dream job for someone like me. Yeah, it was hard for me to let go of a band that I started, but um, it's so great playing with everyone in the band. You know, right. I could I couldn't ask for more with these guys. It's great, and the show is so, getting better and better. So, was it something that they actually saw you playing in your original band? Is how they come to know you, or was you just friends with somebody, or how did that work come about? It came about in multiple ways. Um, when I when I was in Love Blast full time, um, we had opened for Hairbangers Ball twice. Gotcha. And then um, the former singer had recommended me when he was going to be leaving, um, and then they put out a. They were reaching out to different like wait staff and 
different talent buyers and stuff. And I guess my name came up multiple times right. every avenue they went. So they asked me if I wanted to come by on audition. I came by and auditioned and it was a lot of fun. Cool. It was a lot of fun. I mean, pretty much instantly when I walked in, I was offered a Jaeger bomb, so I knew I was in the <laughs> So that yeah. seems to be the that seems to be the drink of choice with those guys, from what I can <laughs> tell. That didn't Jager look like bomb, a Jaeger bomb. Jaeger bombs for <laughs> um, Jaeger bombs for me and Polly, um, Kid, and um, Kid and Rod are big Rumplemints fans, and then. Um, Ricky Rhodes is just a big beer drinker and, and Rumplemints of course too. Mm. But, um, yeah, we all, we all have our drink of choice. If I have a drink, it's usually, uh, Captain and Coke. And then, yeah, my shot of choice is def- definitely the Jaeger bomb. Definitely. So what about Claire? What is, so Claire's a Jaeger girl too, right? Yeah. Well actually Claire, Claire is actually, um, got us on hog bombs. There's a, there's a, there's a drink that's almost like Jägermeister, but it's called Schwarzhog, and it's supposed to be like the crappy version of Jägermeister, but <laughs> Claire and Polly like it even more, probably because it's more potent than <laughs> Jäger. <laughs> but yeah, actually in Chicago, in Chicago, it's it's Hog Bombs for them. So, so is that the the Pabst Blue Ribbon version of Jägermeister? <laughs> <laughs> think so i don't like it as much but i mean if you talk to the two of them i mean we'll be in an argument for about 10 minutes until everyone gives up (laughs) yeah Yeah, you're not winning that one not happening no 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 alan you have any questions not right now not right now if you what do you i know you've only been in there a year and i know that they have a a basically a set list of pretty, pretty well staple songs that they do how do you go about though when you when you introduce new songs to that? How do you how does that come about? I mean, because I know you, you you can't go by well this song is popular now because you you guys are a, a hair metal tribute band. So right. how do you go back and how do you pick those songs that you introduce into the band? Well, th- that's one of the things that I really like about Hairbangers Ball because I've been given a lot of an opinion on what the set list should be because. I think everyone in the band understands and knows what a huge fan of this music I am personally, man. I mean, everyone's got, you know, a love for the music, but I think everyone knows like how, I mean, obsessive really I am with right. metal music. So <laughs> I, um, I've had a lot of hand in picking the bands of the month and selecting what songs we're doing for band of the month. A lot of it gets picked out like by area and stuff like, because some, we could play in Chicago and we could play, I want a woman by rat. And some people might not know the song, but then we'll go play the same song over in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And everyone loves it over there. It's really interesting too, how even in like a region, like the Midwest, there are still like sub regions Sure. With that like different things it's re- it's really cool and that's one of the that's one of the things we're really lucky to play all these different places for i mean um, I do, even even on a local scene here you know i play in a, in a cover band and even you know we don't go we maybe got a couple hundred mile radius but we know there's certain songs that work in certain bars and like you said you go to the next bar you know 100 miles away it doesn't work out where the crap there you know so we kind of oh, keep yeah. track of what we play and you know, custom. So there's a lot of there's a lot of work to that. But I know hey, yours. You guys travel. What is your radius? Where do you travel from, basically? Uh lately it is pretty much. Um, we're centralized around like the Chicago and then right. the suburbs of Chicago. Um, but then lately we've been getting calls like as north as um, Big Bend, Wisconsin. And then as far south as um, Louisville, Kentucky, right. as far as far west as Cedar Rapids, Iowa, cool. and then maybe as far east as um, Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, that's a hell of an area. <laughs> that's a good area. Yeah. Well, yeah, and we we get requests from all sorts of different areas, but it has to. It has to make sense for us to be able to sustain doing it. Well, it's got to be financially, you know, it's got to be to go that far and carry all your scrap. And then um, 
like we've we've had a lot of people like freaking out lately like like Brian, why aren't you guys playing Louisville, Kentucky, or Evansville, Indiana right now? Because it's January and it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, getting ready to get some snow. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool because those two guys are from Evansville. Oh, okay. Oh, well, from, actually, we're all from Evansville, but those guys live in Newburgh, which is just right outside, outside of Evansville. No, and I'm I live from, in Evansville. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh, and I'm, I live in Blue, I live in Columbus, Indiana. So when you guys drive down 65, and you turn right on uh, four on uh, 46 to go to Bloomington, I live right in that area. Oh, okay. So Saturday, you just wave when you go by. I'll just throw wave tomatoes. <laughs> we'll see you later. Throw tomatoes and eggs at his house. So how do you set up? Um, you know, I, I do watch kind of where you guys go. So it's pretty much just Friday, Saturday nights, right? Is it, you, you, unless winter. you're local, right? In the winter, yes, it's it's mainly Friday, Saturday nights, um, unless we have a corporate gig or something like that. Like last year, we did a um, we did a Wednesday event at the Shed Aquarium, and then we also did a uh, we did an event at a venue in Chicago called the Cubby Bear on a weeknight too. But um, yeah, for the most part, it's every Friday, Saturday, and then as soon as we start getting into the spring and into the summer. Um, we could be out from like Wednesday through Sunday, um, sometimes two gigs in one day, like this past, uh, yeah. yeah, we did taste of Bloomington and then we did the bluebird right out. That was one of the most fun shows I think I've ever had in this band. It was brutal. It was hot, sweaty and disgusting, but the crowd at taste of Bloomington was great. And then of course the bluebird is always great. Especially, especially right after the taste, it was really cool. So, yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes it really varies. The winter probably only two shows in the week, and then the summer there could be four. I mean, in the past there's been five. Um, I haven't had to, you know, do that to my vocal cords yet, but um, mm-hmm. I, I imagine it'll be coming soon. Better <laughs> sense. <laughs> Do you have a do you have a uh, do you have a day job or is this it for you? Um, I pretty much do this, but I also I work at a law office in the uh, in the mornings. Just I just do like fifteen hours a week over there, mainly for for nothing more than structure, <laughs> because it's really easy to get swept up into um, what you see on stage as many days a week as possible because it's very, very fun. So, um, yeah, sometimes you do need somewhere to go <laughs> to kind of give yourself something. Um, that's very I, responsible of you, young man. I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah. So where did your influence come from, from the music then? Older brother, dad? Where did, uh, where did it come from? Empire. Mrs. Doubtfire. Mrs. Doubtfire. Movie Mrs. Doubtfire, because there's a scene in the movie where um, Errol Smith's dude looks like a lady is playing. And then just from that, that's that's all I needed. As soon as I heard that, I just asked my parents, like, I think I was about six or seven. And I asked, um, you know, who who is who is that song? It's hilarious. Like, I didn't think the song was hilarious, but the scene in the movie yeah. is really really hilarious so i did, i had them find out who who was doing it and then um i think it was christmas or maybe it was my birthday i think it, i think it was my birthday like my my ninth birthday or something i had um aerosmith permanent vacation that year so yeah and then ever since i was obsessive with aerosmith for a really long period of time which is why um September was really cool for me because in September we were doing Aerosmith Band of the Month. So we got to do Dude Looks Like a Lady and we got to do Angel, which are both on the Permanent Vacation album. Right. And then um, we did Loving an Elevator and Crying also. So I was obsessed with Aerosmith for years. And then um, 1995 Kiss uh, MTV Unplugged came out. And yeah, then I, and you, the, the, you know you know what the best thing about MTV Unplugged was for me personally was I got to get 
bitch slapped by it because when I when I was a kid, the day MTV Unplugged came out, I was buying. They they had the music department show for like all the different instruments for the elementary school kids. And I wanted to play drums really, really bad, but there every kid wanted to play drums. So by the time I signed up, you couldn't play drums. So somehow, I don't know how it happened, but somehow I got stuck playing the fucking clarinet. I had to play clarinet in the, um, the school concert band. And when I came home, when I came home from getting my fucking clarinet, Kiss and TV Unplugged was on. I had never even seen Kiss before. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, I'd never, I'd never seen Kiss. The only band I listened to was Aerosmith. And I just, this was, so it was, it's not even about the makeup or any of that stuff for me. It was just the songs were really cool. I thought the guys in the band looked at really cool. And I'm sitting there just with like the biggest look of defeat on my face. <laughs> and the fucking, just feeling destroyed. <laughs> inside and i just i looked at my clarinet and i was, i thought i'm such a fucking pussy <laughs> like, <laughs> i wanted to play i wanted to play guitar so bad i wanted to play drums and i wasn't allowed to play guitar um and then i was going to play drums for the uh concert band and i'm sitting there watching mtv unplugged with my little fucking clarinet thinking i'm such a fucking pussy <laughs> <laughs> it was uh yeah, that's, it was, that's uh, hilarious. <laughs> so then, so so you saw that was that the first album you bought then? No, I didn't. I didn't buy Unplugged after that because right around the same time, um, the "You Wanted the Best, You Got the Best" compilation came out with like, yeah. the Alive, Alive and Alive Two, and then the new songs. So that was the first one I got, and then mm-hmm. after I got that one, um, I. I, I I have everything now. I, I, have, I have it all at this point. So. so being somebody that started out and didn't know about the or didn't start with a makeup, you started with Unplugged, and now you've got everything, what is your favorite era of that music, just even music-wise, not even the, the – the, the, not I mean, taking away the look, what is your favorite music of that, of their collection? My, my favorite sound for Kiss <laughs> – this favorite album or favorite era, you know what I'm my saying? Favorite, my favorite album is is going to be really unpopular, and you guys might cringe, but my favorite album is Crazy Nights. And um, <laughs> not Alan. Alan's like he's lost. <laughs> Alan's like that's my first album. <laughs> no Destroyer was my first album. I thought he was yeah. going to say The Elder. I was just going to fall yeah. out of my chair. Oh, I, I like that one too. Oh, I, we too. Me and me and Alan like it too. <laughs> I, it annoys oh. the it annoys the piss out of my band. But there's not one Kiss song I don't like. Oh, not that's one. A good that's a good answer, actually. I mean, it annoys the piss there, out of my band. But there's yes, some that yeah. I don't care for. But I don't. There's nothing I really hate. It's just... there's, some, there's something I appreciate in all of it, really. Yeah. Um, my favorite, my favorite sounding Kiss time period, and my favorite look for Kiss, other than like the look, would probably be Revenge. I love the way the album sounds. Um, the band looked really cool then. Um, One of the few unmasked times that Gene did not look uncomfortable. Yeah, or, or, or like, like a, a big, woman, it like, or a like a woman. woman. <laughs> yeah. Mod. <Seriously>, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, that, that's I like. My favorite kiss is probably like Asylum through Revenge, um, but I, I love all of it. I'm, my favorite masked kiss album is probably Hotter Than Hell. Um, I like Rock and Roll Over quite a bit. I mean, there, there's not there's not a Kiss album I don't like. My favorite. So are you was, a big fan of uh, Carnival of Souls? Would you have liked to seen them continue with that, or you think that it was? I that? like I like Carnival of Souls. It's not my favorite direction for Kiss. I like the music, um, but Kiss for me was like a fun band, and it did Carn- get dark. Yeah, Carnival of Souls. Um, although it sounds really cool, I'm glad it was just one album like that i don't yeah i didn't i didn't really need to hear them go any farther than that but i mean at the same point in time like all the guys in the band like um kid and rod especially are all um they're big metal guys 
like, I don't know if anyone's got kid on their Facebook page or anything, but he talks about Metallica probably every five minutes. <laughs> um, so for, for those guys, it was really cool to show them Carnival of Souls. I mean, they don't probably remember because we were all shit faced in a hotel room somewhere, <laughs> but, but, um, yeah, kid and rod if you were watching at one point in time you did like a kiss album actually rod rod likes kiss and kid enjoys all the kiss that we're playing but i mean right it's more it's he's more of like a metal kind of guy so cool but then again rod's all about cinderella right now too and now that we're doing cinderella band of the month which he was not at first and then we had to learn the songs and i think everyone got a really strong appreciation for cinderella <laughs> that's that's how, how it usually works i mean yeah you can't be a fan of a big fan of every one of them so you gotta you gotta find somebody that you know you end up learning something about and and learning to like it what what songs did you play then last month when you did the uh, christmas special when we did when we were doing Merry Christmas, we were we did um we did two songs from like the makeup period and two songs from the hairband period. So we did um Detroit Rock City, I was made for loving you from the makeup period, and then we did um Heaven's on Fire and Lick It Up from the um makeupless period. I mean, you, I mean, those are those are their popular ones that people were going to. Well, you know, that's the sing along. When you're asking song selection, we we always take that into consideration. Like we look at like the top songs on iTunes and the top songs on YouTube, because um, the the reality of it is we have to make the two worlds meet. Um, because like if I, uh, I mean, let's let's be honest. If I play, I love the song, but if if every single night I had to play living on a prayer and don't stop believing and only songs like that, like if our set list was just living on a prayer, don't stop believing and talk dirty to me, regardless of how much I like those songs, it wouldn't be a whole lot of fun, but you have to do them. So that's why when we get to do stuff like metal health and um, youth gone wild and all the, all the ones where I get to really scream um, it makes it a lot cooler. I mean, if I were picking Kiss Band of the Month, you would end up with Turn On the Night, Mr. <laughs> yeah. and, there you go. Uh, you would, you would the end oath. Up with, uh, and, yeah, exa- exactly. Like, and we at that point in time, we might as well play a Love Blast song at a uh, Hairbangers Fall show. Like, right. you no have to. Play. Well, Problem now, like- speak, speaking of Love Quest, you mentioned earlier that. Um, You'd been on tour with bands like Dawkins and Faster Pussycat, things like yeah. that. Every band that's been on tour has had a Spinal Tap moment. You got any you want to share? Um, the worst thing that happened to me on stage actually was honestly all the Spinal Tap stuff happens in Hairbangers Fall. Um, <laughs> Talk about the, that. The, the Love Last stuff. I mean. The, the Love Blast stuff was just hard, like the tour bus breaking down and then having to take an Uber to the show, uh, stuff like that. Or, um, you know, I think that I think the bus broke down twice and the tw- the trailer broke off twice. I mean, so it sucks and you're sitting out in the middle of a highway. And, you know, th- then the, the really funny thing is when you're at the when you're at the venue Everybody knows who Tammy Down from Faster Pussycat is, but he, no one knows who the fuck he is when he's stranded on the side of the highway. <laughs> <Or whatever>. <laughs> <laughs> it's um gets a little different, but no. In Hairbangers Ball, my first um my first Spinal Tap moment was I was at a venue by us called Dirty Nellies in Palatine, and I went out in the audience to sing part of Rebel Yell by um. Billy Idol, Idol. Yeah. and uh, I I was going out in the crowd and I was like singing up in people's faces and it was like this really fun moment and then instantly afterwards I walked to a door on one side of the stage which was exactly exactly parallel with it, it was like completely symmetrical there's one door here on this side of the stage there's another door here this door I knew led me to the stage this door I thought also had the same function. 
<laughs> this door did not have the same function. I walked into a closet, and then the door locked from behind. <laughs> <laughs> so I was stuck in this closet, and then somehow, somehow I felt my way around in this dark room, and I pushed into another door, and then the door opened, and I was just in the alley. <laughs> so, so when I when I went out into the alley, then I um, I ran around the side of the building and found the door that we load into, and I just pounded on it until the security guy opened it up, and I actually did make it back on stage. That's funny. Before, you know the song, <laughs> and because of wireless technology, I didn't miss um, any of my vocals throughout the whole way, but. Um, yeah, that was, that was probably, that was one of the worst ones. And actually, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm feeling like we're, we're pretty good friends now, guys. So I think I'll, uh, I'll tell you guys, uh, probably my worst on stage story. Um, oh, please do. <laughs> yeah. Well, other than the, the most painful one was at the Bluebird. Um, <clears throat> I, um, I was going through a really rough period of having acid reflux. So one point in time, I s spit up a little bit like into my mouth and it was, I had only had like one drink at that point in time. So it wasn't like from like boozing too hard or anything, but I, I puked a little bit on the States. Thankfully no one saw it, <laughs> but there's a part in sweet child of mine where me and Polly do this jump together and then we do a kick at the end. Well, as soon as I did the kick, my feet fell out from under me because of my puke on the stage <laughs> and I broke, I broke my rib. I, oh, I, just, wow. I, I nailed the stage and I broke my rib at the bluebird and I had to, yeah, I had to finish the rest of the show and it hurt for about like three months. I'll guarantee it. <laughs> the worst thing is just you're breathing and it's, you know, it's moving your ribs and you, you need to be able to take big full breaths when you're singing. So yeah, that was the, um, that was the most brutal one. But not the most embarrassing one. The most embarrassing one was when I was playing with the – I was playing at a venue in South Bend, Indiana with um, one of the first tribute bands I started playing with called Platinum. And I had gotten really arrogant about my my diet before, before the show. I was not – you know, because when you're the singer, you really have to watch what, what you eat and, because – you're pushing on it during the show, and like I said, acid reflux will bug you. So I decided, what the fuck? I'm getting into town today. I'm just going to get a buffalo chicken sandwich. Oh. Well, it wasn't so bad for, you know, the acid reflux so much as that um, when this band was doing Still of the Night by Whitesnake, I felt it start brewing in my stomach. <laughs> I got off stage. I didn't get off stage at this point in time. And if you've seen me when I'm on stage, I'm wearing like multiple belts. Well, this also poses a really big problem <laughs> in these kind of situations. So um, I I kept trying to just hack it out. And we got to home sweet home. We got to the guitar solo. And I'm like, I'm not going to fucking make it. So I went out in the crowd like I was like pretending to sing to people in the crowd. And as I was pretending to sing to people in the crowd, I made my I made my way over to the bathroom and started um, slowly <laughs> taking belts off along the way. And as soon as the guitar solo hit, I just booked it in there. <laughs> care of what I needed to take care of. And then the only thing is it didn't um, – when you're in a situation like that, you know, it never – and smoothly as you would like. So um, I finished the song um, on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and like I was saying, like I was applauding wireless technology earlier, I was able to finish the song on the toilet and saying all, even, even, it's a really interesting thing to be on the toilet and have your band on stage and be singing Home Sweet Home, which is a very delicate ballad <laughs> where you're just fumigating the bathroom. and going, you're, 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 Your sound guy's going, your sound guy going, what the hell's all this echo coming from? I didn't put any reverb in his channel. The 
knows what's <laughs> going on and stuff. And your voice is so much louder than you know anything on the stage at that point in time. So. And the funny thing would be the guy sitting next to you in the other stall going, what the fuck is this guy doing so <laughs> yeah. <loud?"> Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, think he, I think he could tell from the snakeskin cowboy boots right now. <laughs> and the, the three stall. belts on the floor. <laughs> so. That's cl- that is classic, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad That's I hilarious. asked that one. <laughs> you are, man. That was the best question of the night, man. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's great. Yes, that's what really happens. <laughs> that's what really ha- – sometimes you won't notice it, but a member of the band might vomit on stage. And then if he's um, if he's not on stage, there's a good chance that he or she is in the bathroom at this very moment. <laughs> that's funny. My, my other oh. question for you, uh, did you ever learn to play your clarinet or did you give it up pretty quickly? Oh, I, I stuck out the year. I stuck out the year and then I, I didn't stick with it. I did. So, I did this so thing with uh, no... X phone. Well, if it makes you feel any better, when it came my turn to join the school band, by the time I got done, trombone. <laughs> now, now oh, dude, I was a very, very short kid, and the trombone was as long as I was tall, <laughs> so I could never stretch it out all the way to the final note. Oh, that's classic. Yeah, awesome. that explains that explains a lot. So do you uh, miss playing guitar? I know you said you, you, you <laughs> did play guitar with the band when you first started out for a month. I mean, are you a, I mean, would you, do you like singing better than you do playing guitar? Or is that something that you, you know, how I'm trying, what I'm trying well, to say? I, I enjoy them both for their own thing, but the, the cool thing is when the girls sing or um, sometimes Rod Viper sings a lot of songs in the van, the band now, like right now he's doing um, run to the Hills and, um, Rainbow in the Dark by Dio. Um, so when he does like the Maiden or the Dio, I, um, I'll i pick up a guitar in those moments. Oh, that's or, cool. So you actually do, are playing. So yeah. I, I, okay. I, and then when we did Kiss Month, I did I played guitar the whole Kiss block. During okay. the Cinderella, I'll be playing guitar on that too. So I actually play a lot of – I probably play guitar maybe like 25% of the night. Oh, okay. That's cool. See, I, didn't, I hadn't seen you since you started, so. Quite a bit. Awesome. But it is definitely nice to uh, put it down from time to time, too. And it's nice to pick it up. Yeah. When so so who, all, who all are the members of Hairbangers Ball, then? Because they, they've changed. So what are, who, who is it? So there's Kid Chaos on drums. Yeah, there's Kid Chaos on drums. There's Polly Pants, who started the band. There's um, Claire Crush on keys and vocals. And then there's... Um, Ricky Rhodes on guitar, and then there's um, Rod Viper on bass and vocals, and then then there's me, Mick Yeager, on uh, guitar <laughs> guitar and vocals. Gotcha. So cool. Yeah. So that's how that goes. That's awesome. Well, that's awesome. So it's Saturday, it. Saturday night in Bloomington. Yes, yes, sir. Where do you go uh, from there? Away from home. Uh, Saturday night is actually our only night this week. And then the week after that, we're going to be in on the 13th. We're in Lyle, uh, Lyle, Illinois at a place called base camp. And then, um, January 14th, the next day we are at, um, dirty Nellie's in Palatine with our, some friends of ours. Uh, it's an original band from Chicago called black actress. They're going to be opening up the show for it. So that that's going to be a lot of fun for sure. Cool. But, I mean, I've I've got to do this, and I do this on stage all the time. But if anyone wants to know where we're playing, they can go to hairbangersball.com. Um, the band's on Facebook, the band's on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. So yeah, we're on all the social media. Um, you can also, if you go to hairbangersball.com, you can sign up for our email list on there, and that's usually probably that's probably the best and quickest way to get like all the all the new show dates and stuff. So cool. yeah. Good deal. Cool. Good deal. Well, like yeah. I said, we, we enjoyed, we, like I said, we all three went up there to Bloomington and saw, saw the band here. It's been what it, it that been was. That was in 2015. That was right after we started this podcast. Yeah. yeah. It was a good night. We had, we had a good time. Hit, hit, hit Taco Bell late at night. <laughs> Not me, buddy. Yeah. Not me. No Taco no. Bell. The kid, the kid and Rod always hit up the Taco Bell right before the show. Um, oh, no way, man. That is I'm, rough, dude. I'm always over at the subway getting a salad beforehand. 
There you go. <laughs> well, I, so I don't have another incident like I had in South Bend. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There, there's, now there's you gotta be, little... caref- gotta be careful with those salads because sometimes they turn you into a salad shooter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's a salad shooter? <laughs> That's where it comes up. <laughs> as fast as it goes in, it comes right back out. Get your greens. That, that is why also when you're singing, you you got to eat four hours before the show. Right. There's, yeah. a, there's a whole process. There's yeah. a whole, whole process. Oh, yeah. It's cool. Awesome. Yeah. All right, man. It's All been right. great having you. Really appreciate yeah, your time. Guys, thanks for having me. I appreciate no it. No problem. Yeah. I'll well, look definitely. for you Saturday night. I'm probably running into you somewhere. He will yeah. hunt you there. down. He'll be the guy with the fireball in his hand. I'm not hunting you down. <laughs> and you guys coming too? Or? No, we're. I'm. Uh, I we're we're going to be here. That's that's about a three. Bloomington's what about two hour trip for us? Two and a half hours that's or about, so. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah I have a, a, a fucking car. <laughs> I, I have a kid who may as well be my nephew getting married Saturday. So. Oh, okay, kind, cool. C- kind of yeah. obligated to go to that. Uh, yeah, otherwise, we'd... it'd be a good possibility. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to. Well, with 69 open now all the way to Bloomington. It's not so bad. you know. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad at all. Get your ass Rain. up there. Yeah. Well, I've got to, like I so said, we're replacing a bass player in our band this right now. Oh, so yeah. Doing tryouts for bass players. So, hey, if you want to play bass, come on down, man. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'll be there, though. I'll find you. Oh, yeah. Well, when you come to hook... Evansville next time, I'll see you when you come to Evansville. So. Deal. Bill, do you drink? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, um, yeah, like, I've been known drink. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 get, we'll do something, that's for sure. Cool. <laughs> Sounds like a deal. All right, man. Well, you can find us on uh, www.agesofrock.com, and we are available on iTunes and YouTube and whatever other Twitter video you want to find Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Instamatic, Facebook, whatever. And yeah. uh, it's been great I'll be having you around and, Newburg tomorrow if you want to come. I mean, I'll be. Yeah, it's, <laughs> if, if you see some guy with that's limping, find him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go, man. Hey, we're out of here and we'll see you uh, next week. Peace out, people. Peace, Peace out. out. Thanks for listening to the Ages of Rock podcast. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and most importantly, tell all your friends. Remember, you're never too old to rock. Until the next episode, peace out, folks.